Welcome to Mind the Gap. This is Jennifer Butler, your host. I am so excited to be bringing the show to you guys. We're going to be talking about our brains and our minds and how everything works together and teach you how you can control everything. What is up, everybody? It's Jen. It's been a while. Just over here dancing to my music intro here. And um, yeah, wow, it's been a while since I sat down to do this with you guys um, and kind of share what's been going on and open up some dialogue on some cool stuff happening in the world and your life and my life and everybody's life. Um, Let's first start out with I don't know what to start with. Do I start with the broken leg that I had in September or do I start with the the Christmas COVID that I got, um, which is why you hear a little raspy going on? Um, I will try not to cough during this podcast. Um, But yeah, I got the COVID. Um, My whole family got it. That really sucked. We had a a COVID Christmas. Um, and uh, yeah, I broke my leg in September. So that was super fun. Also had to have surgery, tip fib break, compound fracture, um, all because I was trying to give my little chickies their water, just walking through my yard. Apparently carrying an extra 40 pounds means that you can just snap your leg right in half when you fall because you're a klutz because I'm totally that I'm a total klutz. Anyways, what I wanted to talk to you guys today about is gratitude. And here's the thing. Gratitude is a like catchphrase, right? Like we're like, let's do a gratitude journal, like gratitude meditation, like everyone be grateful for everything, blah, blah, blah. And, and here's the thing. The studies show that being grateful and having gratitude in your life does improve the experience of positive emotions and can lead to more cognitive flexibility, which can help you be able to look at a scenario more than one way so that you're not getting stuck and and feeling overwhelmed and not able to proceed in your life. So yes, that is all wonderful and amazing. Um, But here's the thing. So I wanted to do this because I wanted to do a gratitude challenge um, that I am going to put the link to in the dis- the, the description. Um, it's time sensitive. So whether or not you get there when it's already started, if you want to jump in, jump in. If not, don't. I don't care. Like this is just kind of more for me because I feel like I need to experience more gratitude in my life. Anyways, long story short, what I was trying to say is that I, I like to get all the information so that I can present a really clear idea of what something is when I'm talking to other people about it. And the definition for gratitude is like all over the place. Y'all, I don't know if you've ever like Google it, like what's, what is gratitude? And they'll be like, oh, it's being grateful. Well, what the hell does that mean? What does it mean to be grateful for something? And apparently this is something that has been discussed throughout the concept of time, like legitimately the philosophers of like Roman times talked about what gratitude was and the how you could determine whether or not you were experiencing gratitude or if you were being ungrateful or ingrateful um, and all of these other things. It, it, it's crazy. I, I downloaded like, I don't know, 12. No, I, I let me count. That was there's 13, and then I downloaded three more. So 16 articles on gratitude and how to increase gratitude and and what gratitude does for your emotions and how it's being rated in adolescence and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. But no one ever really gave me a, a definition of what that was. And so I had to find like a specific article on like, what the heck is gratitude? And so I looked up this article. I'm going to pull it up for you guys. You can't see it, but it's in front of me. It's called, What is Gratitude? Ingratitude provides the answer. And it was an article written by Jessica Navarro and Jonathan Tudge of the University of North Carolina, Greensboro in Greensboro, North Carolina. It was published online in September 28th 
of this year, 2020. Um, and they did a complete review of historical and current researchers, philosophers, uh, great thinkers, writers, influential people of time. And anytime that they wrote about the idea of what gratitude is, or in their answer, what ingratitude is is and how they correlate to one another. And then they looked at what, um, you know, current positive psychologists are defining um, what gratitude is. And, and as an overview, here is what they found. Um, in their historical review, in the current review, these are all the things that they came up with, what people were saying what gratitude is. It's a positive emotion, a virtue, a motive, and even a skill. Okay, but what are the aspects of this skilled, virtuous, positive emotion that we can factor into an actual definition of what gratitude is? So here's what they came up with across all the people that they were looking at was that gratitude involves Experiencing positive feelings associated with something that someone has done for you or that you directly benefit from. It involves expressing the positive feeling to that someone or situation and experiencing an internal desire to reciprocate that feeling to the other person. So, oh my God, what the hell does all of that mean? And this is where it really gets difficult. Where like everyone comes up with their own idea of what gratitude is and being grateful and is can you be grateful to a sunset can does it have to involve another person are we talking about just having gratitude for the people around us and do you need to have them do something specifically to you in order to have gratitude for their life right so like this is this is where it all gets really tricky and sticky for people like me who like to overthink everything um, and are afraid of doing everything wrong, right? Like, what if I do a gratitude journal and I'm not actually expressing gratitude in my journal? And is having a gratitude journal even having gratitude uh, according to what people across time have said? What gratitude is, is where you're expressing this positive feeling to someone, someone or in something in that situation and then having a desire to reciprocate that feeling, right? So like just having a positive feeling positive experience about something and feeling grateful to have been able to have that experience. Like if you're sitting on the beach and you're witnessing this amazing sunset that is all the different colors of the rainbow and you're watching the sun dip into the ocean. I'm sorry for all of you people who live on the East Coast and don't get to see this. It's amazing and beautiful and you should. And you just have this feeling of beauty and peace and happiness and this, this, this thing inside of you where you're like, Oh, I'm just so grateful to be alive. Like I get to witness this beauty. Are we saying that that is not a a situation where you're actually experiencing gratitude because there's not someone that's doing it. And how do you, how do you reciprocate that feeling? Right. That emotion to someone else. And I have my theories and, and all of these things, but so here is what I am positing as my own personal definition of gratitude. Not that this is something that I've scientifically evaluated or put in front of a team. I just came up with it today. Literally. I just, I did my research. I sat down and I was like, okay, what does this mean to me? Okay. So here it is. Gratitude is the experience of positive emotions in relation to your perceived reception of a gift from someone else or outside force for which you are motivated to pass along those same positive emotions. So I'm going to say this again. I'll say it a little bit slower. Gratitude is the experience of positive emotions in relation to your own perceived perception of having received a gift from someone else and or an outside force for which you are motivated to pass along those same positive emotions. And here is the very first 
example that I came up with for you guys. And this might show you where my focus on in life is. I am grateful every day for the eggs that my chickens give me. And in this new definition that I'm positing is that I am experiencing extreme positive emotions every time I pick up one of those eggs and I see those eggs and I hold it in my hand. And what happens inside of me every single time, and I'm not kidding you, every time is I hold that egg in my hand as my chickens are clucking around my feet. And I think about all of the energy that that chicken put into this egg and that she just leaves it there for me with no, no other thought, just that this is what her body does. She's just leaving it there for me to eat, to be cared for with part of her body. And that might sound really weird. And it might be like, okay, well, what is this outside force that you're motivated to then pass along those same positive emotions? Well, y'all, I hang out with my chickens, like, like a lot. And I have special treats for them. And I sit with them and I talk with them and I give them their special treats and we let them free range and they have, you know, they can go anywhere they want. They can eat anything that they want. They're very, very, very happy chickens. And when they let me, I give them little chicken massages. And this is where that I think this other part of this gratitude is, right? Like, what I'm giving back to them is, is purely because I am so motivated to make them feel loved because how loved I feel when I get their eggs. Right? There's no obligation for me to be nice to my chickens. I don't expect them to like be cuddly, although I wish they would be. But anyways, that's totally different. But so this simple little thing that I came up with that popped in my head is getting my eggs from my chicken and how grateful I am that I get these eggs from them and that I experience this whole process of emotions of how amazing this one little egg is and where it came from and how it happened and how I've cared for these chickens since they were just little baby chicks when they still just had all their little fluff and they lived in my bathroom and We've, you know, protected them and fed them and watered them and bonded with them and they all have their names. And then now they give me these little gifts every day. And those little gifts motivate me even more than prior to getting those gifts to give something back to them, to make sure that they are well cared for and loved. Something else that you guys might be able to connect with more (laughs) is um, when my four-year-old daughter comes up to me and she's just like, I want to give you a hug and a kiss. And she gives me the biggest hug and she gives me this kiss and she just looks into my eyes and there's just this flood of positivity and, and love and appreciation that I have for her. And in her doing that to me, I am having these positive emotions based on this gift that she's giving me, the hug and the kiss. And I have this internal motivation to return that same thing to her. So this brings me to like, what what is the important part of gratitude and what is the world of positive psychology saying about gratitude and why is it? viewed as being so important and all of these studies are being done on how they can increase um, your positive emotions, reduce your feelings of depression, um, and how are these things important in our daily lives and why is it important to focus on these things? There's a lot of different ways that we can approach this concept. The easiest way is to say we live in a society where social animals and having gratitude it leads to a more positive environment within that social structure, right? So if everybody is going around and being grateful for one another, then everyone is reciprocating that behavior and we're all interact- interacting in a pro-social way. When everyone is interacting in a pro-social way, then more positive emotions, more things are able to get done, less people arguing, people aren't fighting, those types of things, right? So even if you just look at it in your own little 
structure of your family, if you were to express more gratitude towards uh, your loved one, your partner, your children, and in turn, they experienced more gratitude and then thus expressed gratitude, then it would be this cycle of pleasing and pleasure within that unit. And I can imagine that if that was what everyone was doing, we would go out into the world and we'd all be a little bit more positive and that would kind of expand from there. The other thing where we're talking about this actual focus on being grateful and having like a gratitude journal and and making that be your focus is a really important thing that has to do with our brains. And I've I've talked about this before in multiple different ways, Um, but our brains are are hardwired. They're pre-programmed to uh, focus on the things that can cause us a threat, right? A threat to our life. And we're no longer, you know, human beings living out in the middle of the wilderness where our threat was constant. This modern world that we live in has made it so we don't have the threats that we had before. Most of us, particularly here in the United States, don't have to worry about being attacked by bears or mountain lions while we sleep at night. We don't have to worry about where our food is always going to come from. We don't have to worry about where we're going to get clean water or how we're going to raise children beyond the age of, you know, infancy because there's so many dangers there's so much threat there's you know germs that we can't see and and can't protect against but there's no clean water there's no soap all of these things that people had to they used to have these problems that were their brains were programmed to create a a solution for well we don't have those problems anymore but our brains are still programmed to find those problems and so they find them in other things And a a great um, documentary that I watched years ago, and I have no idea what it's called, but it was by um, a researcher, I think, at Berkeley, where he was looking at the, the modern brain and how it functions to provide those answers in things like the amount of stress that we feel when we're in like rush hour traffic. There's literally no threat to our life by being late for an appointment or late to work, but we have created this increase of threat for these social concepts of being late. And our brain has decided that those things are the the biggest threat. And then we have a negative emotional reaction to those threats when they're there in order to try and mitigate them, right? I'm using air quotes to mitigate this threat of being late to work. You, You can't really do that by getting mad and being stressed while you're in the car. But that's our body's reaction. It's like a a natural reaction. So here's what they found that gratitude does. Also, it's about a, a, a programming. So gratitude, when you are able to practice having gratitude, your focus is not so much on the negative things. The focus is finding the things that you're going to be grateful for. Finding the things that elicit positive emotions rather than finding the things that pose a threat to you. And typically things that pose a threat to you elicit a negative emotional reaction, not a positive one. We don't usually go around being like, oh my God, that thing could totally kill me. That's awesome. Uh, You know, we're like, oh my God, that thing could kill me. I'm not going to go over there. Now I'm scared. Now I'm stressed. My body is releasing cortisol, preparing me to run away or fight for my life or whatever, you know, like cuddle myself into a ball while this bear attacks me because that's the best actual option. Um, If you're ever attacked by a bear, that's actually the best thing to do is to lay flat on your stomach, put your hands over your head and just be like rigid as you can. It's very strange. Anyways, my brain goes on these weird tangents. Thank you for coming along for these tangents. <laughs> so what is this all about then? What is what is gratitude? Is gratitude important? 
Is being grateful something that can actually be positive in our lives? And the answer is yes. Even though they can't really decide on what is a good definition of what gratitude is, this concept of being more grateful and expressing gratitude in your daily life does in fact lead to more positive emotions. It does in fact, through research, has been shown to lessen the feelings of depression and has made people feel more connected to other people. So again, I am starting a challenge January 1st. It's like a couple days away. There's going to be no one. You're all listening to this months down the road, probably. But I'll probably open up the challenge open-ended once I've done one month through. It's a 28-day challenge. And the challenge is going to kind of go across all of these different concepts. Uh, I actually had a totally different idea what the challenge was going to be before I did all this research. And now I'm going to change it up. So it's going to be based on um, this concept of finding things to be grateful for, right? Like baby step into this gratitude concept, going through your daily life and finding the things that you can feel grateful for, even when you didn't have that initial reaction. So like today, as I'm walking down to my office, I stepped on a rock and I twisted my ankle on my broken leg and pain shot up my leg. And I was like, oh, God, just rah, right? Like anger, because that's my default. Um, and then I'm like, I'm grateful that I can walk. I am grateful that I had a surgeon. I'm grateful that I had insurance and I was able to get the surgery without going into financial debt. <sighs> okay, now now I'm not so angry, right? Like that's how that mitigated that anger for me. I could have just continued to be grumbly, grumbly. Ah, ah, why am I doing this? Why am I walking down to my office? I should just be sitting in bed. I hurt. I don't like this. But instead, I'm like, okay, now we're practicing gratitude. Now I'm going to find the things that I can be grateful for in this moment, even though I'm pissed that my ankle hurts. So that's going to be part of this challenge is just finding those things. The second part of the challenge is going to be expressing those things, right? So like most of the things that I try to find gratitude on are outside forces. They're not necessarily things that people have done for me, but taking the time to then think about who am I grateful for? What have they done that I'm grateful that they're doing and how can I express that gratitude to them? And in a way that it reciprocates that feeling of togetherness, love, joy, insert positive emotion here. And then it's going to be kind of the the coming together, both of the things at the end, right? Like, how can we do this? How can you find ways during your day while you're doing stuff to just automatically do, I'm feeling really grateful for this. and I'm going to express that. Um. And even if it's just as simple as, you know, you're at the grocery store and the person who is checking out your groceries just smiles at you and you're just like, oh, that's so nice. And how can you then reciprocate that feeling of joy, that positive emotion that you felt because somebody simply smiled at you and then go from there? You're, so, so you're training your brain to look for all of these little things like how many times today can I express gratitude? How many times today can I feel gratitude and immediately express that back as a way to program your brain to be looking for these things? I hope that this has all been helpful for you guys. And I hope that when you saw this, you're like, yay, gratitude. Let's talk about gratitude. I didn't turn you off of the whole thing and make it more complicated. I hope that this offered some clarity and can give you some ways to go out in your life and, and just experience it and just try. Because I know, like for me, guys, like this has been a really <laughs> shitty year. It has been hard. I have never experienced a year like this in my life. But the thing that keeps me going every day is that I can look back and I can, there's things that I can be grateful for. 
And I have not done a very good job in my life of expressing that gratitude or reciprocating that gratitude. And I want to know if by doing these practices that people have studied and shown that it can make a difference, if I do that, can I improve my life? Because if we're not here to improve our life, guys, like what are we here to do? Sit around all day and stare at the dirt? Or stare at the TV and not have any thoughts or stare at our phone and not have any thoughts or feelings or emotions. That just doesn't seem like a life to me. And I'm hoping that the life that I can create for myself and my family and my children and those around me and my community and my clients and everyone out there listening is a a life that contains just as much positivity as there is negative. Those are the things that keep us moving forward. Those are the things that lift us up, that make us feel connected, that create a sense of community, bringing this social animal together with others in a positive way. So my challenge to all of you guys, go find something to be grateful about. Even if it's something really silly, it doesn't matter. Let's just try to bring more gratitude and joy and positive emotions into this world, especially we're, you know, 2021, who knows? Nobody knows what's going to happen next year. We're all hoping, oh, we're going to shut the door on 2020 and everything's going to get better, but that's really up to us. It's up to us on whether or not it gets better. And maybe in spite of all the horrific things that are happening in this world, maybe we can just bring a little bit more positivity to our small family unit. And if everybody did that, it's like paying it forward. If everybody did that, then this world would be a better place tomorrow. All right, y'all. Thanks again for coming, for listening, letting me go on and on about being grateful. I'm grateful for you. Every time I get a notification that someone has listened, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that you're choosing to be better, do better. Until next time, y'all. Peace. Thank you so much for listening to the show today. I can't wait until next time. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Youth Coach Jen, J E N N, two N's, y'all. And if you have any questions, please hit me up. Let me know if you want me to feature something on the show. Please, please drop me a line. Can't wait until next time, guys. Peace.